Peter was the most favored angel in the kingdom of heaven. His name is Lucifer. Lucifer was created with the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in view. Lucifer was the wisest creature God ever created. No other angel, no other being was created with the same intelligence that God gave to this creature. God says that this creation is perfect in beauty. Apart from the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this creature is today's highest being. Lucifer becomes so impressed with his own beauty, intelligence, power, and position that he began to desire for himself the honor and glory that belong to God alone. This pride represents the actual beginning of the scene in the universe, preceding the fall of the human Adam by an indeterminate time. Welcome to our new kingdom! Welcome to hell! Sin! Death! My Lord! Let's rebuild our kingdom upon dominion! Disciples! Let's spread evilness in the universe! Lucifer becomes so desperate for revenge, he undertakes the mission alone. At the gate of hell, he meets his offspring, sin and death, who unbar the gates for him. He journeys across chaos till he sees the new universe floating near the larger globe, which is heaven. God says Satan flying towards the world and foretells the falls of men. I see chaos among mankind. Father, let me be the living sacrifice for the salvation of the world.
Be careful! Satan already entered the Garden of Eden! Let's look for Satan! You! That way! You! This way! Let's go! I will send you off to warn Adam and Eve from Satan's rebuke. Satan in heaven, before his rebellion, was a high and exalted angel next in honor to God's dear son. His countenance, like those other angels, was mild and expressive of happiness. His forehead was high and broad, showing a powerful intellect. His form was perfect. Is bearing noble and majestic. A special light beamed in his countenance and shone around him brighter and more beautiful than other uh, angels. Yet Jesus, God's dear Son, had the preeminence over all other angels. He was one with the Father before the angels were created. Satan was envious of Christ and gradually assumed command which developed in Christ alone. The angels joyfully acknowledged the supremacy of Christ and poured out their love and adoration. Lucifer bowed with them, but in his heart there was a strange, fierce conflict. Truth and loyalty were struggling against envy and jealousy. The influence of holy angels seemed for a time to carry him with them. As songs of praise ascended, the spirit of evil seems vanquished. An utter beloved thrilled his entire being. His soul went out in harmony with the sinless worshipper in the love to the Father and the Son. But again, his desire for supremacy returned and envy of Christ was once more indulged. The high honors conferred upon Lucifer called forth no gratitude to his creature. He glorified in his brightness and aspired to be equal with God. Angels delighted to execute his commands and he was clothed with glory above them all. Yet the Son of God was insulted above them. Why? This question, this mighty angel, should Christ have supremacy? Pride in his own glory nourished the desire for supremacy. The high honors conferred upon Lucifer were not appreciated as the God gift and called forth no gratitude to the Creator. He glorified in his brightness and exaltation and aspired to be equal with God. He was beloved and reverenced by the whole heavenly host. Angels delighted to execute his commands, and he was clothed with wisdom and glory above them all. Yet the Son of God was acknowledged sovereign of heaven, one in power and authority with the Father. In all the counsels of God, Christ was a participant when Lucifer was not permitted as to enter into the divine purposes. Why? This questioned this mighty angel. Should Christ have the supremacy? Why is he thus honored above Lucifer? Lucifer was convinced that he was in the wrong. He saw that the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The divine statutes are just 
and that he ought to acknowledge them as such before all heaven. Had he done this, he might have saved himself and many more angels. If he had been willing to return to God, satisfied to fill the place appointed him in God's great plan, he would have been reinstated in his office. The time had come for final decision. He must have yielded to the divine sovereignty or place himself in an open rebellion. He nearly reached the decision to return, but pride forbade him. It was too great a sacrifice for one who had been so highly honored to confess that he had been in error. Rejecting with disdain the entreaties of the loyal angels, he denounced them as the Lord's slaves. He would never again acknowledge the supremacy of Christ. He had determined to claim the honor which should have been given to him, and he promised those who would enter his rank a new and better government under which all would enjoy freedom. Great numbers of angels signify their purpose to accept him as their leader. He hoped to win all the angels to his side, to become equal with God himself, and to be obeyed by the entire host of heaven. At length, all the angels are summoned to appear before the Father, to have each case decided. Satan unblushingly makes known to all the heavenly family his discontent that Christ should be preferred before him. To be in such close conference with God, and he be in uninformed as to the result of their frequent consultations. God informs Satan that this he can never know, that to his son will he reveal his secret purposes, and that, and that all the family of heaven, Satan not excepted, were required to yield in pleasant obedience. Satan boldly speak out his rebellion and points to a large company who think God is unjust in not exalting him to be equal with God and in not giving him command about Christ. He declares he cannot submit to be under Christ's command that God's command alone will he obey. Good angels peep to hear the words of Satan and to see how he despised to follow the direction of Christ, their exalted and loving commander. Good angels weep to hear the words of Satan and to see how he despised to follow the direction of Christ, their exalted and loving commander. Lucifer was jealous because his wisdom has been corrupted, that it was from Christ that he received his brightness and beauty. He believed that he was as bright and as beautiful as was his creator. He wanted to share in the worship given to the Father and Son. The issue is about worship. He wanted the three being government in heaven where he would receive worship just as does the Father and Son. Two great powers are now in the field of battle. Satan, who at one time stood next to Christ in the court of heaven, had become the adversary of men. Before the fall of Lucifer, he aspired for the supremacy that had been given to Christ, who was the one of the Father in the government of heaven. There was war in heaven, and Satan and all the rebellious angels he had deceived were overcome. Those who had opposed the will of God in appointing Christ as the chief ruler were cast out of the heavenly courts, and since that time they had been warring against the Most High. Christ was the only begotten Son of God, and Lucifer, that glorious angel, got up for warfare over that matter, until he had been thrust down to earth.
tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Michaela, I command you to expel Adam and Eve from the garden and tell them the future events and the coming of the Savior. Serpent, because you've done this, you are more cursed than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. 
In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. For dust you are. And to dust you shall return. Mm -hmm.